The war in Ukraine rages on into 2024. Putin appears ever more desperate to find ways to combat the equipment that other countries are sending into Kyiv. Take tanks as an example. In early 2023, the US, Germany and several of their allies promised a horde of tanks to Ukraine, with Abrams and Leopard tanks making up most of the numbers. Putin was furious. He was supposed to win the ground war, how could he not? After all, Russia has 14,777 tanks to Ukraine's 1,777, a 13,000 tank difference that should see Moscow absolutely obliterate Ukraine. But that hasn't happened. There are many reasons why, which we won't get into here, but the fact that Ukraine has been able to supplement its tank numbers with help from outside allies surely sticks in Putin's craw. Still, hope for Russia came from an unexpected source. Mere days after the January 2023 announcements of new tanks heading into Ukraine, a former Russian space chief promised a killer combat robot that would help Putin destroy those tanks before they even managed to fire a single shell in anger. That combat robot is called the Marker, and the questions are obvious. What is the Marker, and is it truly capable of helping Moscow to destroy the wave of tanks that are being sent into Ukraine? Before we dig into that question, it's important to understand why a former space chief is making such grandiose claims about a special combat robot that will become the ultimate anti-tank weapon. On January 25, 2023, President Joe Biden made a promise to deliver 31 M1 Abrams tanks to Ukraine. That number was no accident. According to the US Department of Defense, 31 is the number of tanks needed to equip an entire Ukrainian tank battalion. According to Biden, the tanks were being provided to help Ukraine defend the territory it currently holds. With their advanced capabilities, they're perfect for helping Kyiv to counter any ground-based attacks Moscow might launch. This was a huge win for Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky. The M1 Abrams is considered to be one of, if not the best tank in the world. It's a 76-ton monster of a machine that's packed with digital technology that goes far beyond anything that Russia has been able to field in Ukraine. Its engine is capable of running on gasoline, diesel, or JP-8 jet fuel, with only a filter change required for it to adapt to whatever fuel is available. And thanks to the computerized systems built into the tank, the gunner has an extremely simple role. They mostly rely on the tank's built-in targeting, which Forbes claims has a 95% chance of hitting its target. The tank's modular construction is also a major plus point. Take the engine as an example. If an Abrams engine falters, the fix is usually to replace its power pack, a process that takes just 30 minutes. And this system of easy replacements is seen throughout the tank, which mostly uses line-replaceable units. Essentially, these are boxes of tech that can be switched out quickly whenever the onboard diagnostics detects an issue. Make no mistake about it, the Abrams would give Ukraine a big advantage in tank-based warfare against Russia. But there's more. Along with the 31 Abrams tanks that Biden promised, all of which are in Ukraine as of October 2023, according to the Voice of America, Zelensky enjoyed another major boon, a huge fleet of Germany's Leopard 1 tanks. On February 3, 2023, mere days after the US promised its Abrams tanks to Ukraine, Germany followed suit by approving a plan from German arms maker Rheinmetall to sell 88 of the country's older Leopard 1 tanks to Ukraine. This deal wasn't quite the same as the US donation of Abrams tanks. The Leopards would be sold rather than donated, though at a cut price of around 100 million euros, approximately $107 million. Ukraine would be getting its hands on those tanks for about $1.25 million apiece. This was all on top of the announcement made nine days earlier that Germany would also be sending Leopard 2 tanks to Kyiv, along with others coming from a coalition of European countries. That delivery would be a donation that included 80 Leopard 2s, 14 of which came from Germany, with the 88 Leopard 1s helping to bolster the numbers. So Russia had a problem. Within the first couple of months of 2023, Ukraine had 199 tanks on the way, many of which were superior to the tanks Russia was fielding. Of course, Ukraine still couldn't compete in terms of sheer ground forces, as 200 extra tanks still put it over 12,000 behind the entire Russian fleet. But Putin knew that more tanks meant greater mobility for Ukrainian troops, on top of providing stronger support to Ukrainian ground troops. Putin needed a solution to the combined Abrams and Leopard problem. One proposal came from Fors, a Russian company that specializes in manufacturing equipment used in oil wells. 
It offered a bounty on Abrams and Leopard tanks, claiming that it would allocate a reward to military servicemen for damaging NATO heavy armored vehicles and fixed-wing aircraft in the zone of the special military operation, according to Pravda. The reward was set at 5 million rubles, approximately $71,500, for the first destroyed tank, with each tank thereafter netting the lucky Russian 500,000 rubles, or around $7,100. On top of that, a Russian actor named Ivan Oklobistin, one of the country's staunchest supporters of Putin's invasion, claimed to have contacts with major Russian businesses who were willing to offer 10 million rubles, around $143,000, for every destroyed Abrams tank. There's a problem with these proposals. Throw money at a tank and you're not going to put a dent in it. In other words, these plans to incentivize Russia's ground troops to put themselves at severe risk to take out some tanks simply weren't going to work, even with the vague promise of millions of rubles heading into your bank account. Russia needed a different strategy to take on the Abrams and Leopard tanks. After all, it had made big promises about how all of these tanks would burn like all the rest. They just needed something to do the burning. Enter Dmitry Rogozin. Between 2018 and 2022, Rogozin served as the Director General of Roscosmos, a state corporation that conducts aerospace research and helps Russia with space flights. He also has a deep history in Russia. Before his role in Roscosmos, he was Russia's Deputy Prime Minister, serving in the role between 2011 and 2018, with a particular focus on defense. And prior to that, Rogozin took an ambassadorial role, working as Russia's ambassador to NATO between 2008 and 11. He also happens to head a volunteer unit named the Tsar's Wolves, which is an inspection unit that provides military and technical support to Russian troops. In response to the news that Abrams and Leopard tanks were on their way, Rogozin made a strange promise. Don't worry about those tanks. I'm going to deploy four marker combat robots to the Donbass region to fight against any Western tanks that make an appearance. Apparently, this wasn't just bluster. Pravda quoted Rogozin's claim on Telegram, a social media network that's popular in Russia, as claiming that the robots were already in the region. The first four marker robots have arrived in the area just in time. We are starting to download target images, work out warfare algorithms to conduct fighting as part of a group of combat robots, and install powerful anti-tank weapons. So what are the markers? The Eurasian Times calls it an unmanned ground vehicle, or UGV that looks just like a tank, only miniaturized. A tanklet, if you will. The robot uses the same type of tracked platforms and treads as a tank to move around and can be equipped with a host of sensors and weapons that Rogozin claims allow it to automatically detect and fire upon Ukrainian equipment. The weapons vary depending on need. Anti-tank missiles, which would surely be used against the Abrams and Leopard tanks, can be built into the robot, as can a turret capable of spreading machine gun fire and the capability to launch drone casings. Rogozin goes deeper when explaining the marker's imaging systems. The combat version of the marker robot has an electronic catalog in the control system, with images of targets both in the visible range and infrared. It's those capabilities that supposedly give it the ability to automatically identify Ukrainian targets while it's on the move, and according to Rogozin, all it would take for these robots to be turned against the Abrams and Leopard tanks would be to upload an electronic image that it could use to detect them. Scary stuff. But where does this special robot come from? It was initially developed by a company called Android Technica, working alongside Russia's Advanced Research Federation. It was initially developed as a testing unit for second-generation combat robotics, essentially making it a prototype and it's been subject to a host of claims about its abilities long before Rogozin claimed it could take out Western tanks. Back in October 2021, Russia was claiming that the marker was being used to protect vital state facilities as a security robot. That assignment apparently involved being placed in patrol at Fostoshny Spaceport, located in the east of Russia. Except that didn't last for long. A month later, it was reported that the robot had been upgraded to serve as a medical evacuation unit that would be capable of automatically identifying wounded soldiers on the battlefield before carting them away to safety. And there's more. It's also been claimed that the marker can work as a Counter Unmanned Aerial System, or CUAS, that can use its sensors to locate the electronic pulses that drones put out so it can neutralize them in the air. And now it's an anti-tank weapon. With all of these supposed talents, it seems strange that Russia waited until early 2023, about a year into its war with Ukraine, to consider it entering the conflict. And the reason may be that all of these bold claims about the marker's combat abilities are as much PR fluff as they are realistic interpretations of the robot's true capabilities. That's the opinion of Sam Bendet, who's a senior fellow at the Center for New American Security 
who points to the marker tests that have been made public as reason to doubt the many claims about what it can do against tanks. He points out that all previous marker tests that we know about were conducted against small unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, essentially meaning drones. And while the robots have been put through their path-tracing paces in complex areas, such as forests, they've yet to be tested on an actual battlefield, where multiple countermeasures are trying to destroy the vehicle. Bendet also points out that even if the marker does have the ability to take out an Abrams or Leopard tank, it wouldn't be fighting those tanks in a one-on-one -on -one battle. Ukraine would likely deploy its tanks as part of a combined assault, which would also feature drones and UAVs that would be on the hunt for Russian targets like the marker. Then there are the numbers. 4. Markers Stacked against nearly 200 tanks, you have to wonder if deploying just four of these combat robots, which have questionable capabilities at best, is really going to provide the solution to the Abrams and Leopard problems that Putin is looking for. Perhaps Russia knows this. Though the marker seems like an impressive piece of technology, its abilities may have been greatly exaggerated. It appears that the robot can use imaging and complex sensors to navigate paths around complicated terrain. Plus, it seems that it can also autonomously pick out Ukrainian targets and may even be able to track those targets. But fighting a tank? That may have been a stretch too far when Rogozin's initial announcement of deployment came out. So it likely comes as no surprise that Android Technica has announced certain upgrades since the marker was supposedly deployed. In April 2023, the Eurasian Times reported that the company's executive director, Yevgeny Dudorov, announced that it would be fitting its robots with BAS-80 drones. But even that claim seemed spurious. The BAS-80 was still in the development and testing stage at the time of the announcement, with all of those tests having been conducted without the key component that might make it effective against tanks, explosives. Yes, the idea behind the drone seems lethal. It's a kamikaze tool that's capable of carrying a 600-gram warhead for up to 18.5 miles. They can also be launched directly from the marker. However, they, much like the marker itself, doesn't appear to have been combat tested. All of this leads us to an obvious question. Can the marker really take out an Abrams or Leopard tank, never mind being capable of taking out several of them? Rogozin certainly seemed to believe so. He claimed that the initial deployment of the marker into Donbass would serve as a baptism of fire for the machine. He was also quick to continue, adding to its already impressive list of supposed capabilities. He claims that the marker is able to use its sensors to locate its targets in combat operations that are up to 9.3 miles away, essentially giving it the drop on any tanks that it finds. So perhaps we can add minor stealth capabilities to the robot on top of everything else that it can do. The Eurasian Times also reports on Rogozin's claims about the robot's targeting abilities. Not only can it identify targets, but it's able to prioritize them based on data inputted into the robot so it strikes against the targets that presents the highest threat. Let's say it spotted a T-64, an armored personnel carrier, and some foreign equipment on the line of contact, Rogozin said. The robot will independently select a target according to the priority based on which of them is the most significant, and hit it with the appropriate firepower. Yet another bold claim, supposedly made possible by the array of machine guns, grenade launchers, and anti-tank missile systems that can be built into the robot. But Bendet again casts aspersions on all of these abilities. While he says that the marker may well be able to do everything that Rogozin claims, including being equipped with anti-tank missiles, he also points out that the robot won't be able to operate with impunity on the battlefield. He says that Ukrainian soldiers would make heavy use of UAVs to hunt out any markers on the battlefield, and once located, the robot loses the element of surprise, potentially making it easy prey for combined forces that would try to take it out before it could fire on the Abrams or Leopard tank. And that brings us to another potential problem for the marker its defensive capabilities. For all of Rogozin's talk about how impressive the marker is as an attacking force, again tempered by the fact that the technology behind the robot is in its initial stages, he hasn't said much about what it can do to defend itself when it's located. Yes, it has machine guns and can launch grenades, but as reported in Newsweek, it appears vulnerable to fire from rocket-propelled grenades or RPGs and large-caliber machine guns itself. In short, if a marker gets caught in a firefight, the odds are pretty high that it's going to lose. Bendet says that this fault may be baked into the marker's design. He claims the robot had been designed to replace a soldier in dangerous missions to make those missions more effective, which would essentially make the robot an expendable machine that's expected to strike and then potentially get wiped out. All of which brings us back to the question we posed earlier. Can the marker really take out an Abrams or Leopard tank? The answer may be yes. Assuming that all of Rogozin's claims about the vehicle's capabilities are true, 
But let's say a Marco robot manages to take out a tank. What then? Ukrainian forces would know that the vehicle was in the area and would send out drones to scout for it. As soon as it was located, it would be taken out itself, especially given that its shell can't withstand fairly standard munitions. If Russia had a whole fleet of these robots, that wouldn't be a problem. But it has four, at least according to Rogozin's claims, which is a scant number when compared to the forces of nearly 200 Western tanks. At best, the four markers could achieve a handful of victories before giving their position away, and due to the lack of battlefield testing it's had, there appears to be little chance of it being capable of escaping once Ukrainian forces are alerted to its presence. However, there's one more issue that may give us a true picture of Russia's combat robot and its abilities on the battlefield – its success rate. And that's where the picture becomes a little… blurry. For all of Rogozin's bluster about the marker's power and how it's the answer to Russia's tank problems, there has been rarely any reporting on the robot since its deployment was announced. That leads to two potential conclusions. Either the marker has been so successful that it's taking out tanks left, right and center, with Russia somehow resisting the urge to report on these victories despite laying it on so heavily with its initial announcements about its deployment, or the marker simply isn't being deployed in the battlefield. For all we know, the four that Rogozin sent out may still be sitting in the Donbass region. They may never have been sent in the first place. Details of what the marker has been up to since its deployment are so scant that it's impossible to tell. There are no reports of it taking out any tanks, either from Russian or Western sources. Ukrainian media hasn't reported on its country's troops successfully scuttling a marker either. More suspicions arise from the ban that Russia has placed on selling the marker. In September 2023, the Eurasian Times reported that Russia has received a lot of interest in the marker from its allies. Yevgeny Dudarov, the executive director of Android Technica, confirmed this by stating that he'd fielded interest from several foreign nations that wanted to acquire and develop the capacity to domestically produce their own versions of the marker. While claiming that this wouldn't be possible because Russia supposedly has a policy in place that prohibits it from sharing the technologies it develops, Dudarov let slip something that may reveal why we've heard so little about the marker since its grand announcement. It hasn't been formally delivered to the Russian military. That means that any markers that are out there, assuming there are any at all, are test models that are unlikely to prove much of a threat to Ukraine's Abrams and Leopard tanks. And given that the article was published in September 2023, around nine months after Rogozin's claims that the marker was being deployed, you'd have to assume that it's experienced little success if it is in the field. After all, Russia would surely have ordered more of these combat robots in the months following the initial deployment of the four test models if they'd actually been able to take out tanks. So where does all of this leave us? Based on what Rogozin and Android Technica have said, it certainly looks like the marker is an impressive piece of technology, at least in terms of its pathfinding and detection capabilities. A machine that can move, identify targets, and attack autonomously would certainly give Moscow an advantage in ground-based conflicts. The problem is that it hasn't. For all of the big talk surrounding the marker, there's little to no evidence that it's actually an effective force against Abrams or Leopard tanks. There are no reports of it using its supposed firepower to attack these tanks, or any Ukrainian ground forces for that matter. No markers have been reported in the field by the Ukrainian military, and even Android Technica's executive director says that the Russian military isn't formally using the marker in combat. All of this reduces the marker's importance to the point where the combat robot that was supposed to take on the fleet of tanks is little more than a PR stunt employed by Russia as a response to those tanks arriving. Moscow needed to look strong when it discovered that some of the world's most advanced tanks were going to make their way into Ukrainian hands. The reveal of the marker was supposed to be that show of strength. It was also meant to highlight the advanced technology that Russia can deploy to take on what many consider the most technologically advanced tank in the world. But so far, it all seems like smoke and mirrors. Perhaps the marker will make its presence felt at some point in the future, once it's out of its testing phase and has a defined purpose. Russia may be able to deploy it with confidence, but as a tank buster, the marker appears to have been used as propaganda and little more. But what do you think? Is the marker really as impressive a piece of machinery as Russian commentators claim? Or is it little more than a boondoggle, albeit a technologically advanced one, that isn't fit for the purpose of taking on Abrams and Leopard tanks? Tell us what you think about this supposedly powerful combat robot and its capabilities in the comments section below.